Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video, I'm going to be going through what monoclonal antibodies are, their function and the ethics. So if you are new here, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos. So first of all, what is a monoclonal antibody? Now I'm actually going to start here with what antibodies are as a recap. And they are proteins which have a specific binding site, which we can see in the diagram. And that binding site is complementary in shape to a particular antigen. Monoclonal antibodies are antibodies which you do make naturally in your body in response to a particular antigen, but you can also create in the lab. So mono meaning one, clonal meaning identical. So scientists are able to create large quantities of one type of identical antibody. And this can then be used for a whole range of different reasons. Um, for medical treatment as a type of drug, medical diagnosis and in pregnancy tests. So that's what we're going to go through in this video, how these monoclonal antibodies can be used for these purposes. Now, how they are made is not actually on the specification, so I won't be covering that in this video. So first of all, targeted medication. And there's two different types. The first one is direct monoclonal antibody therapy. And this is often used in treating certain cancers. And what you can do is create antibodies which have a binding site that is complementary in shape to the antigens on the outside of the cancer cells of a particular cancer patient. Those antibodies are then given to the patient and they'll travel around the blood and when they do reach the cancer cells, so the tumour, these antibodies are able to bind to the antigens on that cancer cell and therefore it prevents other chemicals in the body from binding to the cancer cell which are responsible for triggering this uncontrolled cell division which results in the tumour. So in this way, these monoclonal antibodies, they're not going to be destroying the cancer cell, but they do prevent the cancer from developing further in terms of the growth. And the reason this is an advantage compared to other medication is because the antibodies are complementary in shape only to the antigens on the outside of the cancer cell, they will only attach to those cells and therefore they will not affect or cause harm to the other normal body cells. Now the other idea is indirect monoclonal antibody therapy. Again, I'm going to use um, cancer as the example of the disease that can be treated with this type of um, therapy. So this time you would still use a monoclonal antibody which has been created so that it is complementary in shape to the outside of the patient's antigens um, on the cancer cells. But this time, they will attach a drug which is designed to kill cancer cells. So I've written here a cytotoxic drug. Now those drugs are therefore delivered directly to the cancer cells and will only kill the cancer cells. And that's because the drug does not release from the antibody until the antibody is bound to the antigen. And the only antigen it can bind to is the one on the outside of the cancer cells. So this is sometimes called bullet drugs. The idea being that the drugs are delivered directly to the site that they're needed rather than the traditional chemotherapy or radiotherapy where you take the drug and it can affect a lot of the healthy body cells as well. So that's the advantage of this indirect monoclonal antibody therapy. So that's how it can be used in medicine. Medical diagnosis and pregnancy tests is a second use. So some of the testing, we've got pregnancy tests, which is commonly known, but also it can be used to test for influenza, which is a flu virus, hepatitis, chlamydia, prostate cancer, HIV, and most recently, 
They've been using monoclonal antibodies in the antibody tests for COVID-19, the coronavirus. So we're going to be having a look at how the um, ELISA or the ELISA test works for this. So this enzyme-linked immunoabsorbent assay, this is the test which is used for these very, very quick and often quite accurate um, tests to see do you have a particular antigen or protein in your body. So I've got the example here of a pregnancy test, and this is testing for a particular hormone in your body, and it's used by testing your urine to see is that hormone present in the urine. And it works based on this idea of these three different types of antibodies, and they're all monoclonal antibodies. And I've labelled them as B, C and D to match this picture. So we've got on the left a pregnant person, on the right someone that isn't pregnant. So if we have a look at the pregnant person, the urine is being absorbed into this strip on the pregnancy test, and that liquid will move along the pregnancy test. And when the liquid reaches this part here, it reaches these mobile antibodies. And these mobile antibodies are designed to be complementary in shape to the hormone that is produced in the early stages of pregnancy. And this antibody also has a coloured dye attached to it. So whether you're pregnant or not, this antibody is going to be moved along the pregnancy um, strip as long as the liquid is there. Now step two, which we can see here is section C, this is where it varies depending on whether you are or are not pregnant. And in section C, there is a second antibody but this one is immobilized, so it cannot move. It's attached to a particular point on the pregnancy test. And this one has also been designed to be complementary to the hormone produced in pregnancy. Now that means that if the first antibody bound to that hormone, then the hormone will bind to the second immobilized antibody but you also have the first antibody still attached. And in that way, that antibody with the blue dye will stay in that exact position. And that's how you get this blue line indicating that you do have the hormone present and therefore you are pregnant. If you are not pregnant, that means the hormone isn't present and therefore this mobile antibody is going to be moved all the way along the pregnancy test um, and then when we get to point D, this is your control band, just so you can check that the pregnancy test is definitely working. So here's your third antibody. It's also immobilized, and this time it's complementary in shape to the moving first antibody. So that means the first antibody here, once it moves all the way along to the end, it will attach at this second point, so everyone doing a pregnancy test will get this band, assuming that the pregnancy test is working, but you only get this band if the hormone is present. So that's how it tests for a pregnancy. Now this is the same idea for testing for other proteins in the body. So it's not just testing for um, the hormone release in pregnancy. You could design your antibodies to be testing for a particular protein that is produced by individuals who have prostate cancer or um, other diseases that have a particular protein. Now the other option is this one here, and you might see this come up in exam questions more often for A-level. And I'm gonna go through the steps of what's happening to then explain the results down at the bottom in this ELISA test. So the first thing is, you would add the test sample from a patient to the base of a beaker, or it might be a slide, whatever your um, device is that you're using. And where we say test sample, that could be a sample of blood, it might be a sample of urine. So you need to attach that to a certain point at the bottom, then wash to remove any of that test sample that didn't attach. So we don't want any floating around, we just want it in an exact position on our um, utensil. 
Then we add the antibody that has deliberately been created, complementary in shape to the antigen for the disease that you're testing for. So whether that is um, a disease that you produce a particular protein, or if it's an infectious disease, whereby it'd be the antigen on the outside of the pathogen. So then we add that. And again, we then, once we've added the antibody, wash so that any antibodies that didn't bind to the um, antigen of interest are washed away. We then add a second antibody, and this antibody is complementary in shape to the first one. And therefore, if you did have the first one bind, the second one will bind on top of that. And the second antibody has an enzyme attached to it. The last step is you add a substrate, which has no color at all, until a reaction which is catalyzed by the enzyme occurs and the products have a color. And in this case, the products are blue. So if your liquid does go from colorless to blue, that first of all tells you that the antigen that you're testing for is present. The second thing, and this is what we can see in this image down here, the intensity of the color indicates the quantity of the antigen that is present. So if you had lots and lots of antigen binding at the very start, then you'd have lots of the first and second antibody binding, therefore lots of enzyme there to catalyze the reaction and you'd get a darker blue. If you only had a small quantity, you wouldn't have as much of the enzyme and you get a much, much paler blue. So that is how antibodies or monoclonal antibodies are used in medical diagnosis. So the final thing that you need to know for AQA A-level biology is the ethics behind the use of monoclonal antibodies for medical treatment and diagnosis. And so far, we've just pointed out all the positives of their application. Now, the reason this is an ethical debate is because of the method used to create monoclonal antibodies. And in order to make them, as I said, you don't need to know the, all the details here of how a monoclonal antibody is made. But the key thing you do know, need to know is that animals do have to be used to create these monoclonal antibodies. And in order to use the animal, they are what are producing the antibodies that we're designing. And to harvest these antibodies, the organ, the spleen has to be removed and the animal does die. So to get these monoclonal antibodies, it does result in the death of animals and it's often mice. So there is an ethical debate into whether it is right to use animals, is it justified to use them so that we get better treatments and diagnosis of diseases for humans. So that is it for monoclonal antibodies. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.